Today the reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Friends, let us pray. We believe. Help our unbelief. Amen. We buried my grandmother the day that my son turned four months old. It was the weekend before Christmas, and we were exhausted from holding the weird vigil that happens when hospice comes into your home, transforms your living room with a pharmacy and a hospital bed. I had a tiny baby, more than a little bit of postpartum depression, and I'd lost the woman who was my other parent. In that thin space, quite literally, the generations shifted. The previous year, exactly one year to the day before she died, I was the daughter my mama was the mother. My granny was our old lady. And that year we were facing new and uncomfortable spaces where I was no longer the newest person in our lineage. We did our traditional Christmas Eve family gathering one more time without her. The wine flowed. The kids ran through the house. There were cookies and there was a ham and the younger cousins took walks around the block. If you know, you know. People passed around my baby as we didn't live close by, and all of us soaked up every minute because we all knew it was likely going to be the last time we did. And it was the last time. I open with this story because today we are all remembering our beloved dead. We are celebrating three simultaneous things today. The Feast of All Saints, Dia de los Muertos, and Samhain. And what a trifecta. Today we have celebrated by naming our beloved dead. We celebrated the prayer with the real grief and tears of one of our youngest, which was so appropriate. I, I, I owe him some money afterwards. That was so good. We celebrated by bringing in photos and flowers and candles. And while I cannot tell you with any certainty where our beloved dead are, I can tell you with absolute certainty 
that they have transformed into stories. And someday, if we are all very lucky, we will all become stories. Even though my son was only four months old when Granny died, he can tell you about her because he heard about her through us. And today we are embracing this time of year with thin space. We have literally entered into a new sense of time with the reversal of daylight savings time. And it reminds me that in the Greek language there are two words for time, chronos and kairos. Chronos has an English word that was derived chronological. Chronos is the time that fell back one hour at 2 a.m. Chronos is the time that keeps our calendars. It's how we know when an event is happening. And Kairos, that's God's time. That's the key moment. That's the way that time almost wraps around the past and into the future, and we are raised up into an outside of chronological time moment. Kairos is what we experience when we're reading an excellent novel and suddenly it's 1 a.m. Kairos is determined by the quality of the experience. We enter Kairos in this space every Sunday at 11, and we are in Kairos when we are in the stories of our beloved dead. Writing and then sharing the story of losing Granny with y'all, it brought me back, not just in my mind, but in my bones. It wasn't like rewinding a tape. It was about me smelling and touching and hearing all of it again. This morning, Joanne read the Matthew version of the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitudes, as Mary all reminded us. And this is a key part of the Jesus story. And this is Jesus bending space and expectations once again, like he so often does. Because Jesus is making it clear in the Beatitudes that the kingdom, or the kingdom that he speaks of, isn't one for the someday. It's not like we're all just biding our time and waiting to go to heaven. Jesus is making it clear that those who the world has cast aside, that those who are not finding much favor in the moment, those people are blessed right now. Everything that Jesus names is not a situation that the world would revere. Frankly, they're not situations that most of us ever want to find ourselves in, poor in spirit or in substance, mourning, meek, hungry, thirsty, persecuted, reviled, having evil uttered against you falsely. The narrative might call the poor the useless. We might call the mourning the crybaby, the meek the spineless, the hunger and thirst for righteousness the shrill women, the unpleasable. We might call the mercy the pushovers, the pure in heart the naive, the peacemakers the unpatriotic. These are people who are not only unwelcomed in the time that the sermon was spoken, but those people who are still unwelcome today. But these people, despite these adjectives, despite these circumstances, despite being completely tossed aside by popular culture, they are told, not only are you blessed right now, you should rejoice and you should be glad currently, immediately, in this moment. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And friends, this is when time bends back around, where the Kronos meets the Kairos, knowing that what became of the way things were with our ancestors, with our soul friends, with our beloved pets, with those who are our beloved dead, we know that one day it will be our names on the lips of those who have loved us. And knowing that no matter what happens, even when we're subjected to persecution or gossip or drama or just plain meanness, that we can take a moment and we can rejoice because we are blessed. And that to experience happiness, to experience the ability to rejoice in the midst of heartache is standing firmly in a thin space. It is claiming our identity as beloved. It is knowing that without the certainty of death, there is no possibility of resurrection. In this space, we feel things distinctly. Grief is a distinct pain from any other because it is sadness that is tied with love and shifted realities. As Jacqueline Bussey puts it, our grief proves that our love is stronger than death because if it weren't, our love for other people would die with them. Or to put it another way, the TV show WandaVision says, quote, what is grief if not love persevering? Friends, in a while we will be gathered at this table together where we will hear the words of Jesus that we recount over the breaking of bread and the pouring of a cup, where Jesus tells his disciples to remember him. The Greek word for that is anamnesis, and it doesn't just mean to think back. It means, as I expressed, to think back and do. We remember, we tell, we do. The role of time from now to then to sometime in the future. The stories of our beloveds, the stories of my granny, which contain the faith that sustained her, her hands on mine kneading dough. She is in the dumplings when I make them. The stories of my friend Ryan, who told me that I look like a supermodel in black, puts him in every fitting room mirror. The stories of Jesus, who shows us in the living and the fighting and the defending and the dying and the rising that we too should not be afraid of any powers or principalities that seek to thwart justice. Siblings, we are because they were. They will be because we were. And right now in this moment, siblings, I implore you, rejoice. Even when your glad looks like fat tears rolling down your cheeks. Because in this moment, this moment that we get outside of the rest of our day, Everything and everyone is joined together, whoever was or is or will be. And together we rise, and together we fall, and together we will eat and we will drink and we will laugh, and friends, we will go out into the world and we will be that good news. Amen.